epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. We've talked about dark rides a few times on this channel, but they're certainly worth having more videos about them. The way I see it, you can't have a complete theme park experience without at least one dark ride, some of which are just downright disturbing. From dilapidated animatronics to walls covered in chewed gum, here are the top 10 disturbing dark rides as voted on by the fans. Number 10, the E.T. Adventure at Universal Studios Orlando and Universal Studios Japan. Now you may be thinking, hang on a moment, how can E.T. be disturbing? Isn't that a family ride? Well, yes, this isn't intended to be a scary ride, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have anything disturbing in it. At first, this ride doesn't seem like anything that unorthodox. Just going through the story beats of the movie and evading the authorities to get E.T. to a ship. But where the movie ended with E.T. going back to his home planet, this ride actually takes you there. As it turns out, there are other types of aliens there, and some of them are pretty off-putting. Now, none of this is to knock on the designers. These models are extremely creative. Still though, look at this mushroom alien with multiple eyes. Then there's this one named Tickly Moot Moot. Is it just me or does it resemble a demonic tumor? There were multiple ones of this design. They look like what would happen if Carrot Top fell into a nuclear reactor. Then there's this character named Magdal. This looks like something that Sid from Toy Story would create. Though charming to many, this ride is definitely a trip. And others do honestly find it kind of creepy. To put it simply, if they ever make a sequel to Pineapple Express, it should take place on this planet. Number 9, The Flooded Mine at Missouri's Silver Dollar City. This is another case where it's not meant to be a horror ride, but it's still unsettling in its own way. On this interactive dark ride, you'll head deep into the heart of a prison mine. But this isn't an ordinary mine, as it's filling up rapidly with water. Throughout the layout are targets, which passengers can take aim at and trigger a number of effects throughout the course. This ride is extremely fun, though there are a few elements to make it worthy of this list. The main thing that's creepy about this ride is the array of animatronics and mannequins. These guys are spread out throughout the ride, and some of them even move. Perhaps the most notable one is this guy turning a crank. Though his design has changed over the years, he still remains a top tier generator of submechanophobia. His twisted grin and wide-eyed stare, combined with his gnarled, nasty hand, are enough to unsettle even those who don't have submechanophobia. These animatronics may not have the polish of Disney or Universal, but what they lack in detail, they more than make up for in Fear Factor. The setting itself is also pretty ominous, with the looming threat of a flood adding a layer of danger to the already claustrophobic mine scenario. If submerged man-made objects freak you out, you may want to think twice before stepping foot on this ride. But for those brave enough to take on the challenge, the flooded mine is a guest favorite for a reason. Number 8. The Mine of Lost Souls at New Hampshire's Canopy Lake Park This relatively small amusement park is known for its wide variety of attractions. The thrill rides, family rides, food, and even the architecture are enough to have it stand out as a memorable experience. One attraction you certainly won't forget is a dark ride named the Mine of Lost Souls. If you think you've seen it all, think again. This ride is like stepping into the kind of twisted dream you'd get after eating a pound of chocolate before bed. The backstory centers on two boys named Billy and Bobby Hollander who stumble upon a gold mine in a cavern, kickstarting a whole mining operation. A few years later, the brothers go missing in the mine. This sparks rumors of the Grim Reaper lurking in the depths, ready to claim unsuspecting souls. On this ride, guests board four-person minecarts and are taken down into the mine. Here, the ride takes a darkly humorous tone. First, you'll spot a miner named Jasper playing chess with a skeleton named Jake, the implication being that Jake died waiting for Jasper to make his move. Then, a demented-looking miner accidentally blows himself up with dynamite, thinking it's a candle. This dark humor serves as a transition to the next part of the ride, where things get spooky and weird. After passing through a waterfall and through some rocks, guests enter the territory of the Grim Reaper. Soon you'll find yourself in a crypt, where you come face to face with the evil ghosts of the Hollander Brothers. Then, without warning, you're suddenly in ancient Egypt. With mummy, a death mask, and two cobras, this ride takes a detour into the bazaar. Turning the corner is perhaps the creepiest visual, when guests find the lost souls the ride's title referred to. These creepy, distorted faces on the wall resemble mummified emojis, and it's here that you'll be jump-scared by the Grim Reaper. 
Then there's this disturbing visual of a headless swordsman who apparently works with the Grim Reaper. His story is unknown. After narrowly avoiding being blown up and the roof caving in, you'll escape the mine. Unless the implication is that you died. Either way, there's a certain charm to this madness. It really is like a bad dream emulator, with each scene adding to the intrigue with solid animatronic and set design. Overall, the imagery and atmosphere as a whole make this ride well worth checking out. Number 7. The Big Red Car Ride at Australia's Dream World You may be wondering how an Australian children's music group could be associated with anything disturbing. Well, buckle up, because you're about to find out why. Recently closing a few years ago, this attraction was a trackless dark ride based on the Wiggles. It promised to take guests into the universe of the worldwide sensation, but due to budget and technical constraints, the ride was severely flawed. Over time, it became perhaps the most unintentionally disturbing family ride ever built. The ride started off with guests boarding the Wiggles' big red car. They would then be taken through several set pieces inspired by the Wiggles' TV show. Now, the ride itself was quite underwhelming, at least by today's standards. The sets felt big and empty, and not only that, but the Wiggles only appear on small television screens that you're more likely to find at a Goodwill than in a major theme park. What's disturbing about this ride is that over time, the ride's effects deteriorated, and oftentimes, rooms would fail to light up properly. Even when the lights did function correctly, you would still see dark rooms with large, empty spaces in the distance. Just look at this image. Add a black and white filter, some static, and some text, and you've got a scene straight out of an analog horror. Then there are these awkward moments that do feature quote-unquote animatronics. I say quote-unquote because they barely move. They just have a constant blank expression with only one pose, and with the lack of proper lighting, they look especially unsettling. It also doesn't help that the ride literally moves slower than some species of ants. The ride wasn't that bad when it first opened, but over time, it became less and less appealing. Eventually, the decision was made to close it down in 2020, but if it was still around, they could make it into a great horror ride. Number 6. Horror House at China's Jinjiang Action Park Admittedly, there's not a whole lot to say about this ride, because its inception, development, and overall history is pretty much unknown. One thing we do know is that notable coaster enthusiasts David J. Ellis and the late great Cyclone Steve got footage of this ride in 2011. This dark ride appears to take place in a haunted house, with the sounds of psychotic laughter and terrified screams echoing throughout. As for the imagery, it's quite demonic and disturbing. There's a body hanging from the ceiling, a faceless cloaked figure, a devil's face on the wall, and an Iron Maiden. No, not that Iron Maiden. There we go. The most unnerving moment comes when you approach what appears to be a woman with no clothes on. The lights flash on and off as you approach, adding a sense of uncertainty and dread. What's going to happen? What's going to pop out? Well, unfortunately, I don't think I can show it on this channel due to YouTube's content policies, but it is pretty gruesome. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. Let's just say that what you see is skinless, but not boneless. Believe it or not though, this scare was actually used from an old dark ride named Phantasmagoria from Tulsa, Oklahoma's Bell's Amusement Park. Either way though, it was an extremely effective scare and almost guaranteed to give kids nightmares. Oh, and by the way, there's also a witch in a bikini for some reason. No comment. Number 5. Devil's Den at Pennsylvania's Conneaut Lake Park We've seen dark rides with disturbing imagery and props make the list, but what about a dark ride that's just plain gross? As of right now, I'm not sure what the fate of this ride is. However, I'm not going to get into the controversy surrounding this park and its most recent owner, as that's a whole nother can of worms. For now, I'll just be discussing what made Devil's Den qualify for this list. Admittedly, this ride is a pretty standard pretzel dark ride slash debatable roller coaster, with hairpin turns and scares scattered throughout. So what gave this ride the distinction of being disturbing? The walls. Yes, the walls. That's not paint you're looking at, that's chewed gum. As it turns out, officials didn't bother scraping people's chewed gum off the walls. And even worse, they actually encouraged people to stick it on. There was even a sign that advertised the quote-unquote infamous gum wall. I understand that there are some people out there who may have fond memories of contributing to this wall, and I won't judge. Still though, this is something you would not see at Disney World. Can you imagine Peter Pan's flight featuring the infamous gum wall? Now I'm not sure how this got past the health inspections, but you know, I don't know, some things just don't have answers. Number 4. Tales of the Okefenokee at Six Flags Over Georgia 
Believe it or not, the original Splash Mountain wasn't the first water ride based on the works of Joel Chandler Harris. Back in 1967, Six Flags Over Georgia debuted a dark ride based on the tales of Br'er Rabbit. Initially, it was criticized for its underwhelming set designs, but the next year, it received a makeover from famous Canadian puppeteers Sid and Marty Croft. The revitalized version used state-of-the-art animatronics to tell the story of Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear trying to capture Br'er Rabbit. At the time, these animatronics were incredibly advanced, but by today's standards, many of them are undoubtedly nightmare fuel. For some reason, these rabbits look like they're about to murder you in your sleep. It probably has something to do with the wide-eyed smiling expressions and unnatural movements. Then you have these yassified singing carrots who look really out of place. Why do the vegetables in this world wear makeup? Then there's these Br'er Bear and Br'er Fox animatronics who sit in the water as one of the earliest examples of submechanophobia. Not to mention that Br'er Bear's eyes could apparently roll into the back of his head. I mean, who does he think he is? The Undertaker? Here's the thing about this ride. From a design standpoint, it's clear that a lot of earnest time and effort was put into it, with its strong storytelling, elaborate set design, and immersion. With the limits of animatronic technology at the time though, these figures look extremely robotic, making the footage of it arguably unsettling to watch. Over the years, the attraction's condition deteriorated due to vandalism and overall wear and tear. By 1980, the decision was made to replace it with a new ride. This replacement, named Monster Plantation, featured a new story involving a world of monsters. Today, this ride continues to operate as Monster Mansion, and while it too has disturbing moments, it can be argued that the original ride's early technology made it much more unsettling. Number 3. Jurassic Jungle Boat Ride at Pigeon Forge, Tennessee We've talked about this ride a few times before, but I just had to include it here. How could I not? One thing I haven't brought up before is the queue. What they did was place mannequins outside of the boarding station to make it look like there are always people there. Close up, these rubber figures are extremely disturbing looking. It's speculated that these mannequins are there so that people driving by are more likely to visit. This process, known as social proof, likely uses a simulated crowd to create the perception that the attraction is popular and worth visiting. As for the ride itself, it was in terrible condition in the late 2010s. Many of the animatronics were worn out and poorly maintained, leading to some truly grisly visuals. In 2018, YouTube user The Carpetbagger took a ride on this attraction and gave us one of the most disturbing POVs of all time. Highlights from the time included the following. First, there's this bizarre naked mole rat thing that's a knockoff of an inflatable maze called the Creature. Right afterwards, you'll find submerged tentacles, a dilapidated T-Rex head with exposed mechanics, a dinosaur with a missing right arm, and a massive worn out looking pterosaur that makes whatever this sound is. Truly the perfect imitation of a dollar store toy with low batteries after being left out in the rain. Afterwards, there's this masterpiece of some mechanophobia, which has been stagnant in the water ever since it ceased operation about a decade ago. Now believe it or not, we do have some answers as to what this looks like out of the water. Apparently, this is an Allosaurus animatronic from an Ohio-based company named The Scare Factory Inc. According to news outlets, this company has been highly criticized for allegedly not delivering products after payment, with the Ohio Attorney General's office receiving five complaints for undelivered products totaling $75,000. You could argue that this figure is lucky to even be sitting in the water in the first place. But that's not all for this ride. You've also got a giant scorpion, giant insects and arachnids, a giant snake coiling through the wall, and to top it all off, the famous slack-jawed T-Rex who likely caused the bite of 87 million BC. Interestingly enough though, since this POV was taken, the ride has updated a few of its animatronics, with many being freshly made and the more worn out looking ones being removed. Honestly though, this is actually kind of disappointing to me, as the worn out animatronics gave this ride a whole nother level of terror. Still, it definitely looks like it's worth riding, so if you're in the area, I'd recommend checking it out. Number 2. Hollywood Tour at Germany's Phantasialand Though no longer operational, this ride will be forever remembered for its unintentionally horrifying visuals. Over the years, this ride pretty much rotted out from the inside, with the animatronics looking more and more diseased. Towards the start, there's another famous submechanophobic scene meant to resemble Jaws. This features a fisherman being attacked by sharks that sink his boat, sending him under the surface. 
Then the sharks go after the passengers with the water damage clear from just looking at them. It's doubtful that these sharks were maintained during the end of the ride's run, if at all. But these guys were still disturbing when the ride first opened with their unnatural appearance. Other disturbing visuals included this giant spider with its hairy legs dipping into the water. But why the spider is in a western scene, I still don't know. After this was a Middle Eastern scene with diseased looking camels that looked like they had some kind of radiation poisoning. Not to mention the robotic, unnatural movements of the people in this scene. Things didn't get better with this Tarzan scene, where it looks like his arm is about to fall off, along with this water skiing ape's face. Then there was a Wizard of Oz scene, where Glinda is apparently possessed by Pazuzu. At last, there was sub King Kong, who sat in the water attacking a police boat. This guy aged perhaps the worst of all, with his flesh looking nasty. He was also missing patches of hair, and his decayed looking hand and fingers were like something straight out of a nightmare. This whole ride looked like it stank, literally. Many have stated that this ride smelled horrible apparently because of mold. And after years of decay, the ride was shut down in 2020. Interestingly enough, photos of its demolition were later leaked online from an unknown source, and they really are something. Moving on, number 1, Br'er Rabbit's Burrow at Wales Oakwood Theme Park. Much like Tales of the Oki Finoki, this ride was also based on the works of Joel Chandler Harris, except not really. This ride had about as much to do with the original stories as Dragon Ball Evolution had to do with the original anime, though unlike that movie, this ride was enjoyable, albeit unintentionally. Originally, this ride was known as Nutty Jake's Goldmine, but in 1999, it was closed down and replaced with Br'er Rabbit's Burrow two years later. The new ride went as followed. Instead of the laughing place, you're invited to Br'er Rabbit's happening place for a quote-unquote rap party. Because how do you do, fellow teens? Fittingly enough, after entering the burrow, you start off in the bathroom. On the left was a rabbit taking a bubble bath, while on the right, you saw and heard Br'er Rabbit fighting for his life on the toilet bowl. Interestingly enough, this scene later became a submechanophobic icon, yes, another one in this video, as the bathing rabbit animatronic was apparently not designed to be submerged in water. The water itself became filthy looking over time, although the uploader of this video said it didn't smell as bad as many people thought. That scene aside, the ride as a whole had a claustrophobic confined atmosphere with limited lighting. Its original mind scenario was fitting of this feeling, but on something that's supposed to be a whimsical ride, it added an uneasy feeling to the whole thing. Throughout the course, there were several dead-eyed rabbits preparing for and having a house party. They had pillow fights, break danced, and there was even a scene where they got drunk. Please drink responsibly. Over time, this ride got more and more neglected. After a while, many of these scenes had no music, with only the sounds of the mechanics being heard in several scenes. Now just imagine getting stuck on this ride during a power outage. Talk about a real-life creepypasta. After years of terrifying the public and getting negative reviews online, this ride was closed down in 2013 to make room for a Roald Dahl themed area. An area they apparently didn't bother getting permission from Roald Dahl's estate to open, so they were apparently forced to remove all references to the author's work. Now that's one hell of an epic fail. Now it's time for the comment shoutout program. This is where I take 5 random comments from my previous video and read them out. These comments are from my video on Marine World Africa USA. Ben Shepard 6007 says, Night Crew back at it again, what an interesting place. 300ZX Bear 2 says, went there a lot when I was a little kid in the mid 90s. Lynn S618 says, we used to go there every summer in the late 70s, early 80s. Fun place, would go to Frontier Village too. Jack Pigeon 4088 says, You know, out of all the information here, I think I appreciate the period appropriate music you chose for each era the most. Definitely worth the wait. Thanks, Jack. Anne Pennington the Fourth says, Oh my god, I saw the unicorn at the Ringling Brothers show as a child. I still have the program magazine my mom bought me. It comes with a fold-out poster of the unicorn. I should get that framed and put in my bathroom. If you want to see your words in my next video, leave a comment down below and it may be selected. 
Please note, though, that inflammatory or spam comments will not be read. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Instagram and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. And I'm on TikTok. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.